This video provides a brief review of electronic signals and their frequency spectra. Electronic signals are voltages or currents that carry information that we care about. For example, we might have a voltage that depends on the temperature outside, or we might have a current that carries an audio signal, or perhaps an electromagnetic signal, like a radio signal. In general, these signals will be time varying, like the voltage waveform shown here. Signal transducers are electronic components that produce voltages and or currents that depend on signals of physical interest. So for example, we might have a temperature sensor that produces a voltage signal that depends on the temperature outdoors, or we might have a microphone producing a current that's proportional to an audio signal. Although these transducers can be complicated, if they're linear, we can model them with their Thevenin or Norton equivalents as shown here. You'll notice that in these cases, we've assumed that the equivalent source impedance is purely real and so therefore is modeled by a resistance rs in general electronic signals will be time varying as shown here and it's precisely the time variations that carry the information that we're most interested in one example of a time varying signal that's of particular interest is a sinusoid shown here this waveform is represented mathematically by the following expression Now, you'll notice the amplitude is VA, labeled here and appearing here in the expression, and the frequency of this sinusoid is omega. Which is related to the period of oscillation, T. Sinusoidal signals are of particular interest because more complicated waveforms can be represented by a sum of sinusoids with different amplitudes and frequencies. Mathematical tools for doing this are Fourier series and Fourier transforms. Here's another time varying signal of common interest, a square wave. Square wave signals can be written as a sum of sinusoids, as shown here. The lowest frequency component of this Fourier series representation is at the frequency omega naught. This is called the fundamental frequency. And it's related to the period of the square wave as follows. From there, you see other frequency components that are at integer multiples of the fundamental specifically three times, five times, and so on in this case. These frequency components are called harmonics. You'll notice the amplitude of the harmonics decreased as you go to higher frequencies. You'll also notice that in this case, there are only odd harmonics. That's not always the case. Sometimes even harmonics will appear as well. Such a signal is often also represented in the frequency domain with a plot like this, where each of the frequency components of the signal is associated with a sinusoid whose amplitude is identified by the height of the corresponding arrows. The plot reminds us that this signal can be represented as a sum of discrete sinusoids at discrete frequencies, the fundamental and its harmonics. That's because the underlying signal is a square wave, which is itself periodic. More complicated waveforms that are not periodic in time can't be represented by some of discrete sinusoids. Instead, you need a continuous frequency spectrum defined at all frequencies omega to describe them in the frequency domain. They would typically represented by a plot like this, where you see the amplitude of the sinusoidal content at any particular frequency plotted versus frequency omega. So in summary, electronic signals are generally time varying voltages or currents that can be represented either with time domain representations or frequency domain representations. When the signals are periodic in time, they can be represented as a sum of sinusoids at discrete frequencies. When the waveforms are not periodic in time, 
and they require a frequency spectrum that is a continuous function of frequency omega.